Ulrich Gustav Neisser December 8, 1928 to February 17, 2012, was a German-born American psychologist and member of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences. He has been referred to as the father of cognitive psychology. Neisser researched and wrote about perception and memory. He posited that a person's mental processes could be measured and subsequently analyzed. In 1967, Neisser published Cognitive Psychology, which he later said was considered an attack on behaviorist psychological paradigms. Cognitive psychology brought Neisser instant fame and recognition in the field of psychology. While cognitive psychology was considered unconventional, it was Neisser's cognition and reality that contained some of his most controversial ideas. A main theme in cognition and reality is Nice's advocacy for experiments on perception occurring in natural, ecologically valid settings. Nice postulated that memory is, largely, reconstructed and not a snapshot of the moment. Nice illustrated this during one of his highly publicized studies on people's memories of the Challenger explosion. In his later career, he summed up current research on human intelligence and edited the first major scholarly monograph on the Flynn effect. A review of General Psychology Survey, published in 2002, ranked Nicer as the 32nd most cited psychologist of the 20th century. <laughs> Early life Ulrich Gustav Nicer was born in Kiel, Germany, on December 8, 1928. Nicer's father, Hans Nicer, was a distinguished Jewish economist. In 1923 he married Nice's mother, Charlotte Lotti, who was a lapsed Catholic active in women's movement in Germany and had a degree in sociology. Nice also had an older sister, Marianne, who was born in 1924. Nice was a chubby child tagged early on with the nickname with Der Kleiner Dicky, Little Dicky, later reduced to Dick. His surname originally had an H on the end Ulrich, but he believed that it was too German and most of his friends could not properly pronounce it, so he eventually dropped the H. Nice's father foresaw Hitler's coming militarism and left Germany for England in 1933, followed a few months later by his family. They sailed to the United States on the ocean liner Hamburg, arriving in New York on September 15, 1933. As he grew, Nice sought to fit in and succeed in America. He took a particular interest in baseball, which is thought to have played an indirect but important role in his psychological interests. Nice's attraction to baseball alerted him to an idea that he would later call a flashbulb memory. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Education. Nicer attended Harvard University in the late 1940s graduating in 1950 with a summa cum laude in psychology. He subsequently entered the master's program at Swarthmore College. Nicer wanted to attend Swarthmore College because that was where Wolfgang Kohler, one of the founders of Gestalt Psychology, was a faculty member. Nicer has said that he had always been sympathetic to underdogs, due to boyhood experiences such as being picked last for a baseball team, and that this might have drawn him to Gestalt Psychology, which was an underdog school of psychology at the time. At Swarthmore, instead of working with Wolfgang Kohler, Nicer ended up working with Kohler's less well-known colleague, Hans Wallach. Nicer also met and became friends with a new assistant professor, Henry Gleitman, who later became well known in his own right. Nicer completed his master's degree at Swarthmore in 1952. Nicer went on to obtain a doctorate in experimental psychology from Harvard's Department of Social Relations in 1956, completing a dissertation in the sub-field of psychophysics. He subsequently spent a year as an instructor at Harvard, moving on to Brandeis University, where his intellectual horizon was expanded through contact with department chair was Abraham Maslow. According to Cutting, Nicer felt a deep sympathy for the idealistic humanism of Abraham Maslow, and Maslow had also been deeply interested by Gestalt psychology. After a time at Emory University and the University of Pennsylvania, Nicer finally established himself at Cornell, where he spent the remainder of his academic career. While at Harvard Nicer became friends with Oliver Selfridge, a young computer scientist at MIT's Lincoln Laboratories. 
Selfridge had been an early advocate of machine intelligence, and NISA served as a part-time consultant in Selfridge's lab. Selfridge and NISA invented the pandemonium model of pattern recognition, which they described in a Scientific American article in 1950. After working with Selfridge, NISA received multiple grants for research involving thinking, which contributed ultimately to his best-known book Cognitive Psychology. Topic. Work and career The rapidly developing field of cognitive psychology received a major boost from the publication in 1967 of the first, and most influential, of NICE's books, Cognitive Psychology. However, over the next decade NICE developed qualms about where cognitive psychology was headed. In 1976, NICE wrote Cognition and Reality, in which he expressed three general criticisms of the field. First, he was dissatisfied with the over-emphasis on the specialized information processing models used by cognitive psychologists to describe and explain behavior. Second, he felt that cognitive psychology had failed to address the everyday aspects and functions of human behavior. He placed blame for this failure largely on the excessive reliance on the artificial laboratory tasks that had become endemic to cognitive psychology by the mid-1970s. He felt that cognitive psychology suffered a severe disconnect between theories of behavior tested by laboratory experimentation, on the one hand, and real-world behavior, on the other, a disconnect which he called a lack of ecological validity. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, he had come to feel a great respect for the theory of direct perception and information pickup that had been proposed by the eminent perceptual psychologist J. J. Gibson and his wife, the Grand Dame a developmental psychology, Eleanor Gibson. NISA had come to the conclusion that cognitive psychology had little hope of achieving its potential without taking careful note of the Gibson's view that human behavior may only be understood by starting with an analysis of the information directly available to any perceiving organism. Another milestone in Nice's career occurred with his publication, in 1981, of John Dean's Memory, a case study, an analysis John Dean's Watergate scandal testimony. This report introduced his seminal views on memory, discussed elsewhere in this article, particularly the view that a person's memory for an event results from an active process of construction that may be influenced by a combination of events and emotional states, rather than a passive reproduction. This view has obvious implications for the reliability of such things as eyewitness testimony, and NISA later became a board member of the False Memory Syndrome Foundation. In 1995, he headed an American Psychological Association task force that reviewed controversial issues in the study of intelligence, in response particularly to then controversial book The Bell Curve. The task force produced a consensus report, Intelligence, Knowns and Unknowns. In April 1996, NISA chaired a conference at Emory University that focused on secular changes in intelligence test scores. In 1998, he published The Rising Curve, Long-Term Gains in IQ and Related Measures. NISA was both a Guggenheim and Sloan Fellow. <laughs> Research on memory NISA was an early exponent of one of a key conceptualizations of memory, the view, now widely accepted, that memory represents an active process of construction rather than a passive reproduction of the past. This notion arose from NISA's analysis of the Watergate testimony of John Dean, a former advisor to Richard Nixon. The study compares Dean's memories, gleaned from his direct testimony, to recorded conversations in which Dean participated. NISA found that Dean's memories were largely incorrect when compared to the recorded conversations. For one thing, he found that Dean's memories tended to be egocentric, selecting items that emphasized his role in ongoing events. More importantly, Dean combined into single memories a combination of events that actually occurred at different times. As NISA states, what seems to be a remembered episode actually represents a repeated series of events. NISA suggested that such memory errors are common, reflecting the nature of memory as a process of construction. Flashbulb memories 
The concept of flashbulb memories was first described by Brown and Kulik in their 1977 paper on memories of John F. Kennedy's assassination. Thus, a very surprising striking and significant event that induces high emotional arousal may yield a vivid, accurate memory of the time, place and other circumstances ongoing at the time of learning of the event. NYSA sought to analyze this conception of memory by undertaking a study of individuals' memories of the Challenger Space Shuttle explosion. Immediately following the Challenger explosion in January 1986, NYSA distributed a questionnaire to college freshmen asking them to write down key information as to where they were, who they were with, and what time it was, when the Challenger explosion occurred. Three years later, NYSA surveyed the now senior students using the same survey to examine the accuracy of their memory. NYSA found that there were notable errors in the student memories, despite the students' confidence in their accuracy. NYSA's findings challenged the idea that flashbulb memories are virtually without error. NYSA conducted further research on flashbulb memories, aiming to clarify the manner in which memories are constructed. One study involved individuals' recollections of the 1989 California earthquake. Using subjects in California, near the quake, and others in Atlanta, far from it, NYSA examined differences in the recollections of those who actually that experienced the event and those who simply heard about it. NYSA used surveys to collect data on the emotional impact of the earthquake and on individual memories of the earthquake to study possible associations between memory and emotion. In the spring of 1991, NYSA contacted participants to compare their current accounts of the earthquake with their previous accounts. He found that, in comparison to participants in Atlanta, the California students generally had more accurate recollections of the earthquake. Topic. Death NYSA died due to Parkinson's disease on February 17, 2012 in Ithaca, New York. Topic. Publications Topic Books and book chapters NYSA, U. 1967. Cognitive Psychology. Englewood Cliffs, Prentice Hall. ISBN 9780131396678 NYSA, U. Cognition and Reality, Principles and Implications of Cognitive Psychology. New York, Freeman. ISBN 9780716704775 NYSA, U. Concepts and Conceptual Development, Ecological and Intellectual Factors in Categorization. New York, New York, U.S., Cambridge University Press. ISBN 9780521378758 NYSA, U., and Harsh, N. 1992. Phantom Flashbulbs, False Recollections of Hearing the News About Challenger. In E. Winograd, U. NYSA, Eds., Effect and Accuracy in Recall, Studies of Flashbulb Memories, pp. 9-31. New York, New York, U.S., Cambridge University Press. ISBN 9780521401883 NYSA U1993 The Perceived Self Ecological and Interpersonal Sources of Self Knowledge Cambridge England Cambridge University Press ISBN 9780521415095 NYSA U and Jopling DA 1997 The Conceptual Self in Context Culture Experience Self Understanding New York, New York, U.S., Cambridge University Press. ISBN 9780521153607 NYSA, U., and American Psychological Association. 1998. The Rising Curve, Long-Term Gains in IQ and Related Measures. Washington, D.C., American Psychological Association. ISBN 9781557985033 NYSA, U, and Hyman, IE 2000. Memory Observed, Remembering in Natural Contexts. New York, Worth Publishers. ISBN 9780716733195 NYSA, U 2003. Cognitive Psychology. In, The History of Psychology, Fundamental Questions, pp. 447 to 466. New York, New York, U.S., Oxford University Press. 
ISBN 978-0195151514 NISA, U, and Winograd, E. 2006. Remembering Reconsidered, Ecological and Traditional Approaches to the Study of Memory. Cambridge, Cambridge Univ. Press. ISBN 978-0521485005 NISA, U. 2007. Ulrich Neisser. In G. Lindsay, W. M. Runyon eds. A History of Psychology in Autobiography, Vol. 9 pp. 269–301, Washington, D.C. U.S., American Psychological Association. ISBN 978-1591477969 NISA, U., and Fivush, R. 2008. The Remembering Self, Construction and Accuracy in the Self-Narrative. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 9780521087962. Journal articles NISA, U. 1985. The Role of Theory in the Ecological Study of Memory, Comment on Bruce. Journal of Experimental Psychology, General. 114 272–276. DOI 10.1037/0096-3445/114.2.272. NISA U1991. Two perceptually given aspects of the self and their development. Developmental Review 11 197-209. DOI 10.1016/0273-2297-91-90009D. NISA, U. 1994. Multiple Systems, A New Approach to Cognitive Theory. European Journal of Cognitive Psychology. 6 3, 225–241. DOI, 10.1080-09541449408520146. NISA, U. Self-Perception and Self-Knowledge. Psych and Logos. 15 2, 392–407. NISA, U, Boudou, G, Bouchard, Boykin, A, Brody, N, Sessi, S. J., Urbina, S. 1996. Intelligence, Knowns and Unknowns. American Psychologist. 51 2, 77–101. DOI 10.1037/0003066 extension 51.2.77. NISA U Winograd E Bergman E T Schreiber C A Palmer S E Weldon M 1996. Remembering the earthquake: direct experience vs. hearing the news. Memory 4 4 337 to 357. DOI 10.1080/0965821963888898 PMID 8817459 NISA U 2003 New Directions for Flashbulb Memories Comments on the ACP Special Issue Applied Cognitive Psychology 17 1149-1155 DOI 10.1002 ACP.1005 NISA U 2004 Memory Development New Questions and Old Developmental Review 24 1 154 to 158 DOI 10.1016/j.dr.2003.09 002